It's May, middle of the galaxy season, and I've got a tarp covering my mount. I think that sums up how my galaxy season is going. So instead, I'm going to take the time to talk about why I think the galaxy season is uh, really challenging for beginners and people who are trying to get into the hobby. Before I get into the video, I just want to model what is a proper springtime San Francisco attire for you guys. And um, if you ever think about visiting San Francisco during springtime, pack a lot of warm clothes because it's probably colder than the winter. Now, this is not science. Uh, it's just, you know, my own observation. But I can think of four main reasons why I think galaxy season is such a challenge for beginners and people who are trying to get into astrophotography. But before I go into that, I want to take a moment to sort of summarize, you know, what is the galaxy season? Well, galaxy season is between March to May, maybe even June, depending on your location. And it's a time of the year where Earth is oriented so that we're actually, uh, our views out into the universe is not being blocked by our own Milky Way galaxies. And most of these galaxies are really, really, really far away, uh, which explains their relatively small size in our night sky. But don't be confused because these galaxies are massive structures in the, gal in the universe. And also most of these galaxies are going to be imaged under broadband conditions. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of hydrogen alpha or, or oxygen or sulfur. A lot of it is going to be broadband, uh, broadband colors. You see that? Actual blue skies. I haven't seen that shade of blue in like two months. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to tonight. Angus Wong here and um, I'm finally imaging again after a two month hiatus due to clouds but uh, the plan tonight is going to try to image the pinwheel galaxy um, but I have to wait and see if that will clear the tree if that doesn't clear the tree then I am going to uh, image the whale and uh, and crowbar galaxy I know that one will clear my tree um, but the whole point of this video is that I want to talk about why I think the galaxy season is really difficult for beginners and people who are just getting into the hobby. Um, and there are several factors why I think that is. So throughout the course of the, of the night, I'll talk about those points and hopefully it will help you out because I know right now in the middle of galaxy season, you know, galaxies are all the rage, but you know, I just see a lot of people struggling and I hope that, you know, I can point out several reasons why and, you know, either you can take some tips from me or you can create your own solution. But either way, I just want to help you guys to be able to have fun during the galaxy season. You know, not to say that I don't get excited uh, normally, but when you've been living under a blanket of clouds for the last two months, even just setting up your mount, setting up for your session, that already feels like an out of body experience. So forgive me if I'm geeking out at just plugging in wires <laughs> because I'm that excited. So I'm doing a one star alignment right now to uh, 
set up my session and uh, begin imaging. But I think this is a good time to talk about the uh, first major hurdle that a lot of beginners would face when it comes to imaging galaxies, and that is the equipment hurdle. Um, that may look like a giant telescope, but this is my AT115 EDT that I reviewed uh, not too long ago. And even with this 805 millimeters of focal length, I am telling you that that is nowhere near enough to properly image galaxies. My images of galaxies through this telescope will still be quite small and tiny. Um, so, you know, does that mean that for a beginner, you know, I would assume that you had a, uh, you would have a smaller telescope because of many reasons. Number one, uh, the cost is less when it comes to smaller telescope. Uh, the size is smaller, it's easier on your mount, uh, and overall, you know, the smaller your telescope, the easier it, it is uh, to use. So what does that mean for a beginner if you are trying to image galaxies with a small telescope? Obviously, the fix is to get a much larger telescope, but uh, I'm willing to bet that that is not in the cards for uh, a lot of people. So. What I would recommend you do, uh, sorry, I'm just doing my uh, star alignment now. Um, what I would recommend you to do is make sure that your focus is on point. So when you're done imaging, you would crop in during post-processing. And as you do that, you want to make sure that you still retain a lot of the great details that you're trying to capture, even when you crop in. So you need to make sure that when you set up your mount, when you set up your telescope, make sure your focus is as sharp as possible. And then even with a small refractor, you can have fun during the galaxy season. So the next hurdle that I want to talk about is the sky condition. Now, I'm actually not talking about light pollution. That's, a, that's an entirely different topic. But what I'm referring to when I say sky condition is how good is your seeing? Um, and basically, do you have stuff that gets in the way between your perspective, as in where I am now, and the objects in your night sky? And you want to make sure that, you know, you don't have a lot of dust particle in your area. Uh, you're not dealing with fog or, or low clouds. Um, you're not dealing with high humidity or any, you know, excess moisture in the atmosphere because all that stuff uh, will distort your clarity. And when it comes to broadband imaging, uh, you want as clear of a night as possible and you want your clarity or seeing uh, as good as possible. Now, I know that for a lot of us, that's sort of, you know, that's out of our, that's out of our control. Uh, and the really, only the, the only really way to, uh, to fix that issue is, well, move to a dark site. So, if you have a dark site near you and you have access to it, take advantage of it during the galaxy season. Another hurdle that I want to talk about when it comes to galaxies and broadband imaging is the fact that in order to faithfully capture broadband target, you need to have a decently dark uh, sky. Now, what you're looking at behind me, this is what Bordeaux 9 skies looks like in San Francisco. So my skies are far from ideal. Um, to help me to image galaxies, I need to use a light pollution filter, a broadband light pollution filter. However, there is a trade-off. While the uh, light pollution filter can block out some of the artificial light glow, unfortunately, it will always take away some of the colors from the galaxies and a lot of times uh, when you use one of these light pollution filter you're gonna lose that spiral blue that is uh, just beautiful when it comes to galaxies so if you want to really do galaxy justice you need to go to a dark sky um, I would say that anywhere from Bordeaux 5 to Bordeaux 4 would be a great way to start and really capture galaxies. And if you can, 
try to do it without filters. So the very last thing that I believe gives a lot of beginners issues when it comes to imaging galaxies is the fact that we as astrophotographer or just uh, amateur astronomer in general, <laughs> we need to factor in the moon. Where is the moon? How bright is the moon? How close is the moon to our objects? Because especially when it comes to broadband imaging, the glow and the illumination of the moon will wash off your broadband data. So let's do some quick math here. I mentioned earlier that the galaxy season runs from uh, March up to May or maybe even June, depending on your location. And it also depends on your own individual uh, threshold of acceptance. You know, you know, different people have different threshold of, you know, just how bad is the moon, right? You know, there are people who will not image beyond 50% and illuminated. There are people uh, who will not image beyond 70. And then there are those who will image all the way up to 90% full moon. So it really depends on you. But let's just say that, you know, the moon will occupy half of the month, right? So you got four months of the galaxy season out of the year. Half of those is maybe washed off because of the moon. So realistically, <laughs> you may only have six to eight weeks out of the year to image galaxies. So you really don't have a whole lot of time. Not to mention, uh, a lot of us are coming from winter. So we're used to having that long night, but come springtime, the nights are getting shorter and shorter. So my suggestion for you is that really plan out your session. Uh, pick your target, decide your exposure time, frame it uh, in the most time efficient manner, and then, you know, start imaging. Because, you know, if you do the math, uh, you really don't have a whole lot of time to image galaxies. So, yeah, I think these are the four main reasons why uh, galaxies are such a massive challenge for beginners. You know, by now you probably understand just how difficult it is to image galaxies, beginners or not. Uh, what I want to say is that, you know, this hobby, it's not a competition with other people. It's really a competition within yourself. So why not take your time? Why not do this hobby at your own pace and learn at your own pace? You know, if you are struggling, I guarantee you other people are struggling as well. I know I am when it comes to galaxy season. And I hope that, you know, by going over some of the main points where I think uh, galaxy season poses a challenge to a lot of beginners, you can begin to understand how to go around it, you know, you know, how to use a filter to help calm some of the light pollution. Uh, you know, if, if, if it's too bad, then, you know, just go to a dark site or how to pick a night where the seeing is better um, and, you know, how to make sure that you focus as well as you can when it comes to imaging with a smaller refractor. All these things, you know, you can do at your own pace and, you know, never compare yourself to other people, but instead look to their work and use them as, as inspiration for your own growth. And with that, I wish you all good health and also good luck when it comes to the galaxy season. And I will see you next time. Clear skies.